All right. Hello to everybody that is tuning in tonight with the Coach's Corner. I hope everybody's had a great weekend so far or at the start of a great weekend. Um, as everyone's getting settled, I'm just going to say a couple of words and then I'm disappearing. So uh, for all of you out there, feel free to ask questions and I will keep an eye on the chat and I will pass it off to our wonderful coaches. So that being said, I will be passing this off to our wonderful Duke Thorfinn. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of SCA Coaches Corner. Uh, tonight, we're going to be digging into one of our fun elephant in the room uh, topics. And this one is going to be, uh, how do we uh, quit chasing people away? Uh, or how do we retain people staying into the SCA? Um, and we have a lot of great guests tonight uh, on our coaches. We've got uh, Duke Edmund, we have Duke Eliahu, we uh, Akhtam Asadis, Viscount Sagan, and Viscount Tristan. And uh, we look forward to hearing from all you guys. So throw those questions into the chat for us and we'll try and get to your questions if we can. All right, so I guess the first thing we should do is we should try and uh, look into how do we keep people in the SCA and, and why are they leaving, you think? And so if, if anyone here has something that they wanna jump in with, then I think this is the time to do it. Or, right. Well, I, we talked about bridging a, a pretty much a global pause in the in SCA activity, and we're going to be coming back to it. And when you come back to something, it's always good to, to look at fresh eyes at the things that you do, maybe the things that were created as habits, and you maybe even didn't realize that they were a habit or didn't realize they may have been a poor habit or that you could do better. And I think one of those things, and that that's the whole topic of this evening's talk is how do we retain people better or how do we make them feel welcome and do a better job of that just overall? Uh, because there've been a lot of people that have come into the SCA and who either will come in, realize it's not their cup of tea and leave, uh, or they get frustrated and decide they're gonna leave or they're there, or they're, they come and are here for a, a year or two, a couple of years, three years, five years, and then they leave or even longer term where they get involved with running activities uh, and events and, and take, a major role behind the scenes and they get burned out. They just said, I've had enough and I, I don't wanna be here anymore. Um, so there's all kinds of different reasons I think that, that people decide to, that they wanna go uh, or not, not participate anymore. And I think these are some of the things that we, we should address. Maybe we could start with the person who comes in brand new to, a, to a, a meeting or a practice and how do we make it appealing for them to wanna to stick around and wanna come back. Any thoughts on that? Well, one of the barriers, <clears throat> one of the barriers is there's so much to learn. There's so much jargon. There's so much going on that somebody who's brand new has a lot to, a lot to learn, a lot to absorb. And uh, I think we do a better job of that in some ways than we used to, but not if we're not, if we're not paying attention, you know, if, if a new person comes in and they, we don't, nobody reaches out to them, no shadowing, no person reaches out to them and says, hi, how, how are you? Um, welcome. Is this your first time here? Let me tell you what's going on. Um, <clears throat> and because people who, people are often very busy. And I think we've all seen it when the news media shows up and interviews, not before the days of media liaisons, um, they find the person who's not doing anything, who's not busy, and they interview them. And that's typically somebody who's on the periphery and may not actually know what's going on. So how do we, how do we get people informed, involved, knowledgeable, and feel welcomed? And that takes a conscious effort to do that. Um, when it doesn't happen, you're getting off on the wrong foot. Um, and um, so that's, that's one of the things when new people come, come to, uh, to a group. Um, but how do new people find us and is another, another issue. Um, where are they finding us? What expectations do they have coming in? And does our communication in advance of people finding us or how they find us help set the expectations for, for what they'll find. So mm -hmm. those are a couple of things. Yeah, I think it's important. Um, oh, 
So right. I, I, I would kind of turn this question around a little bit because you know I've watched a, a little bit of the the ESA stuff that's been going on. Uh, Ask and I, you know, interviews with a bunch of real long timers, and pre a pretty consistent answer is what keeps you coming back is the people. And a lot of what I hear from folks as to why are you still here is because folks, they, they found their tribe, they found the place to be. And so how do we engage everybody to help them find their place, whether it's a fighting household, or an archery household, or ANS, or service, or, or the, the right beer drinkers? You know, how do we find that niche for those people so they stick and then start to sample the smorgasbord of the SCA and, and expand into it? Um, and there's a there's no business a, business axiom, you know. I don't care how much you know until I know how much you care. And I think that engaging new people when they come in as a person who we want to hang out with us and not as a as a newbie piece of meat that could be some a squire someday or an apprentice someday or or what have you, is you know, make them part of the cl club and then help them find their way. And I think that would would head off a lot of the I'm tired of this I don't want to be here because they've got their people they've got their tribe indeed as as my brothers have mentioned there's there's going to be a lot going on all of a sudden we've been we've been out for more than a year now and now we are talking about returning and when we return we're going to be looking towards who, who's returned, who's gone, and are they are they gone for good? Are they, you know, how and how do I feel about that? And what does what does the new group or fighter practice or you know any of you know services or anything else that we were involved in before? What does that look like now? And who's involved? And a lot of the people we will be going. How can I help? How can I help? And a lot of people be going, am I pleased with this or am I not pleased with this? And one of the things that we will be confronting is there will be X number of people who will not be returning for whatever reason that is. During the past year, they've discovered other hobbies or they've discovered that maybe, you know, the SCA wasn't something that they were all that interested in in the first place or whatever that is. Whoever is remaining, we do need to deal with the question of how do we make sure we retain them? Yeah, and I, I wanted to follow up on on that the the whole point of returning to a social group that's been broken up now for over a year, and I think this is going to be tonight's episode could be a herd of elephants in the room, and this is a, yet another elephant. Um, a lot of times. I think it's going to feel once we get together, it's going to feel like there are people with open wounds and that is going to be the division of opinion over politics over any number of issues. It's it's like the last year and a half people have spent ways to find out why it, it, that we're different from one another rather than we are alike. Um, and that's going to be probably the biggest thing to avoid for uh, in terms of behavior that's going to drive people away when they show up and they realize that people that they were friends with now they are at odds with from a philosophical standpoint and i think that's one of those things where as we re-socialize with one another again we need to be kind and understanding to realize we may not have the same views as another person but that doesn't mean that's no reason to to show disrespect for them or to not even appreciate them uh, whether they were your friend or a new potential friend that you haven't really gotten to be friends with yet. Um, it's going to take a, a little bit of uh, understanding and maybe more than a little bit. Uh, oh. It's going to take some showing of good character to be able to be around people that you may have disagreements with. I think one of the biggest things is going to be to try to stay off of the hot button discussion topics that are going to create arguments. And that's just not what we want to have when we get together. Um, there's plenty of online places where you can go and argue your head off. Uh, they're bleeding, like go do that there. But when you show up with people, remember the decorum and remember the courtesy. And cause that's really what the, the SCA is built on 
is is treating people with with kindness. Thorfinn, did you have your hand up? Um, You're muted, I had a brother. Couple of things. Uh, I know when I first got in the SCA, the real great thing about it was you might start off. For a lot of us, we see this great fighting in the park or at a demo, or we were talking about the college groups that used to pop up. But then through those, those people take you to the next like gathering of, of community, whether it's an arts and sciences night or a brewing night, or hey, here's a, this guy does armoring at his house every Thursday, show up and the group of folks will help you make your own armor and, and work with you on that. So I think a big part of retention and continuation, like has been mentioned, are these communities, getting people involved in your local SCA community and then once they're involved in that community and they are able to start creating and enjoying that community, then they go to an event and get exposed to a bigger community. And because they've already been exposed to several different aspects of the SCA, they start to learn new things. So they don't feel so out of place when they get to a tournament and they kind of have an idea of what to expect and, and things to look for, things to look out for. And I think that's really important. And, um, by introducing somebody to that community and, and kind of giving them a broader look at what the SCA is about and to start introducing them to it's just doesn't have to be one aspect, which is fine, but there's a broader spectrum of depth that you can get involved in and get immersed in. I think that's really important to start to make sure that we're not just running into people at the Tuesday night practice and then practice is over and we go away until next Tuesday and there's no other interactions. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. Another thing that we could really focus on is making sure that that these people, when they come in and they talk about their interests, that you you listen to them. Because if you listen, then what can happen is you can say like, you know, this person may not, they, they may want to hear the fighter practice and see the fighter practice, but maybe that's not what they're interested in at all. They just love the kind of, you know, dynamic experience there. And they're like, but they're really interested in tapestries or whatever, right? And then you go, oh, I know this person who does this. And by helping them move along into that direction that you can get them kind of streamlined into that community feeling. And, and, and you know, don't be afraid to take five minutes of time to, to get that new person or, or, you know, let them know where they need to look to, to find the thing they're looking for. And so I think if we all do that actively, it would be really helpful for the new person because I'm sure it's really intimidating right? When you come into an event, you're new, and there's so many activities, and you don't know all of the kind of, uh, you know, uh, etiquette and courtesies and things like that you're expected to do. And so by having this kind of uh, open heart a little bit would be better for us to then have our, our people be able to find that home. And, and you, you sort of mentioned that, that uh, etiquette, you know, don't get caught up in etiquette it, with, with some folks. Allow people to make mistakes and and not know that you're a, a grace or a majesty or an excellency. It's, that's not as important as making these people, anybody really feel accepted and safe. Make sure you're creating a safe place where, where folks can feel comfortable and have uh, amenities and other things that they're gonna need to feel comfortable. That, um, they're and I like to listen to, really take the time to listen to what somebody's saying and their body language and how they're feeling. Um, a brief story to illustrate the point about being kind and understanding and how that makes a difference. <clears throat> uh, many years ago, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine was at her first event and um, she was enjoying it, walking around and looking at everything and uh, being somebody who practiced needlework, she saw a really great tapestry, something needlework hanging um, on, on a wall, and she wanted to look close, closer at it. And there was this chair in the way, really nice chair. So she got on the chair and knelt on the chair to look at it. And some fellow in, who turned out to be a knight, he had a white belt on, came up to her and said, excuse me, ma'am, do you know where you are? She said, no. And he explained to her that she was kneeling on the throne, looking at the kingdom banner. And this was reserved for the, the royalty. 
but he was very kind and very understanding clearly knew that it was a new she was new and um <clears throat> imagine if he had spoken harshly to her assuming that she knew she was making some error um she didn't he explained it to her he was kind to her well she went on to become a pelican and autocrat penzik multiple times my friend mistress claire um and has been a, a contributing member of the society for many many years um and that could have put her off the organization if that had been handled badly so it's incumbent on each of us every time we interact with somebody to be kind to be thoughtful to be understanding um so because that makes it makes a difference yes um it's one of those things that, especially in the topic we're talking about at the moment, it really does go back. You only have one chance to make a good first impression. And I don't, as, as is Grace Eliyahu was, was talking about in this instance, uh, it, it was, it was very kind, but, and it was not anything, you know, the coach's corner, we tend to focus on things about fighting, but whether it's on the fighting field, whether it's at a barony meeting, whether it's at Crown, wherever it is, again, if you're not sure, you know, again, kindness, respect, and grace will go a long way, whether it's a beginner you're talking to or someone who's been in for, for decades. Yeah, uh, the next topic we're talking about here is with for new people is coming in and, and i remember when i started back in the 80s and uh you'd, you'd get a first impression of the society and usually from the fighting because that's you know they were often used at demos and you'd see a level of armor and garb that was pretty visually impressive but now you get armor and garb and pageantry that is like almost hollywood level and i think one of those things it can it is very visually appealing, but it also can be intimidating. Thinking, oh my God, like, is this what I'm gonna have to put up and actually do or make or buy in order to, you know, meet the minimum bar of, of participation? And I remember years ago hearing that the Civil War reenactment community was having some big problems with a uh, very high turnover, which is people would come in and they would leave right away, especially young people, because the, the bar to entry was so high. The level of precision was so high that they that there was great expenditure that was expected and when they just said you know what i'm not really willing to sell my kidneys in order to participate in this activity then i guess i'm out so i guess that the pageantry is is kind of a two-edged sword it can on one hand be very visually appealing and attract people but it can also be a little intimidating. So I think there's ways that we can kind of blunt that down and say, no, you don't have to dress like a Maximilian 15th century Gothic knight if you're gonna get into this. Like that's something you can work towards and we can show you how to get there, but you know, you don't need to go out and, and lay down your, your uh, American Express black card in order to get all that stuff. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that if you think back to when when I started in the SCA, seeing people with jeans and motorcycle boots, that would have been considered no big deal. And then as time went forward and our skill sets grew and also, uh, honestly, access to the internet where we can order anything now. I, you know, when I, my first event, if there was one person in medieval shoes, we would have thought that was amazing. But yeah. now everyone is expected to just go online, which you can have a hundred stores and they order exactly the same period that you need to have your kit be all tied together. And we, and it's this kind of idea that, that I've been doing this 30 years. I'm not, I'm not the starting bar. I'm like an end goal thing. You, you work towards getting all this stuff. Right. And, and if we could just let that go and remember that that person in that dome tent over there is maybe going to be here for 30 more years. Like I was. Right. And if we can think that I started off in motorcycle boots and jeans and a, and a cast off tea tuning that someone just gave me um, and, and, for, and let that go. Remember, let it it's an it's, it's an illusion anyway. Right. Let the art flow over you and remember that all these people, they're fascinated by what they see here. And if we can just keep that that love going longer with them, 
then they'll eventually move uh, you know, on their own organically towards doing all this stuff. And if they don't, who cares anyway, right? Exactly. That's the other thing is that we have to stop caring about that stuff. We're not a, you know, a super hyper accurate reenactment. We're not the Civil War group, right? Or, or a World War II reenactment group or something where they're doing a specific moment in time. We're a very broad kind of idea that is kind of half fantasy and, and half medieval, right? And so let's stop caring about that and making it a fun place for everyone. I think that would be a, a huge start with that idea. But anyone else got something on this? Uh, I have a brief comment. I, I think that the, the, strength, the strength of the society has always been its breadth. It has, over the years, depth in a number of areas. Individuals have gained depth in a number of areas. Sometimes going outside the society to gain that knowledge and then coming back to it. But it's, it's, it's breadth, really, that people of so, who, with so many different interests can coexist by simply, I tell people, ignore the time element. These are just people coexisting from very different countries, very different cultures. So you have to respect everybody's differences, completely ignore the time factor. Because that's one of the questions we always get. Well, how can you have the Viking and the Elizabethan and the Celt and the, so ignore the time. If you saw somebody walk in dressed in, in, Know, like work from work or from like a Viking, you would not assume they were a time traveler. You would assume they were from a place with different, different, um, a different culture with different expectations. And so I assume, and this is how I explain it to new people, or I'll explain it to everybody, that an SCA kingdom is like a cosmopolitan medieval kingdom that had a lot of trade and a lot of visitors from a lot of places. And the rules governing those places were be respectful, don't impose your way of doing things on other people, but meet the common societal courtesies of this cosmopolitan kingdom and you'll be fine. And so the, the, a lot of the, the things that people tend to joke about who've been in, in the society for a long time Vikings versus 14th century and, uh, you know, whatever authenticity versus fun versus those are detrimental to, to retaining people and keeping somebody in by making it, um, by being less accepting of differences. Yeah. It's, it's fun to joke about the, you know, the 14th century mafia and the, the, Viking invasion and the, it's fun to joke about that among people who are experienced but I'm always concerned when I hear that and when I hear other things that people say when when people are hearing it who don't understand that that could be detrimental so again it comes back to courtesy kindness uh, understanding patience with people and not just with new people <coughs> but with current members, because um, <clears throat> what drives people away? Well, the same thing that Edmund said, that people stay in because of their people. It's when there are, it's people who drive them away. It's not a disagreement over a decision about some rule or, or something. That doesn't tend to drive people away. It's people who drive people away the same way. It's people who keep people involved. So, so the, your, your point that you made, Thorfinn, about us not really being reenactors like the Civil War groups, you know, we, are, we are more of a, a recreationist. And if we, if we look at what we're really recreating, are we recreating medieval stuff? Or are we recreating the magic, the chivalry, the romance of the Middle Ages as we have been introduced to them. You know, I, I didn't get into this club because I wanted to sew and do woodworking and, and you know, have to make all this stuff so I can play the game. I wanted to play the game and making stuff was kind of a side effect because I wanted to be able to go and you know, 
talk in my funny Scottish accent and bow to the king and the queen and call people my lord and my lady and, and get that medieval experience, even though I was wearing, you know, poly cotton tunic and sweatpants and orange fluffy slippers. Um, but I was doing the thing, even though I was in, you know, newbie garb. Um, and I think over the years, we've lost a little bit of the, the grip on that concept that we're here to recreate the culture and the fantasy of what we wish the Middle Ages were. We're not here to talk about how many rivets per inch are on a helmet or you know, how many stitches are on a garment. That's, that's not the point of the club. That's a side effect of wanting to look good while we play. Right, and as, as his grace just said, those side effects can definitely, it can really affect beginners because if their perception becomes, oh my God, I have to do this. Okay, well, now we've affected them in a negative manner, right? And as his grace Eliyahu said, what we say has weight with the less experienced. So there's a lot of things going on that if, if we pay attention to them, you know, it can make things better. One, the main point though is we, we, we mentioned a lot of things, but the main point is the membership is the lifeblood of the SCA. Whether you've been in for decades or whether you're a prospective member, the membership needs to be tended to and it needs to be understood in that every person that comes to us may have a different opinion. They may be looking for a different thing. We've covered a lot of that. Maybe their interest, you know, is sewing. Maybe it's brewing. Maybe it's archery. Maybe it's heavy combat. Maybe it's rapier. But all of that, again, uh, comes back to the idea of how is it presented to them. And a lot of the points that we've covered as far as the detail, the too many expectations, all these things that come up when you're a beginner, they're like a sponge. Right, their experience is being formed based on their on their first few experiences within the group. So my my good friend Duke Talamar has something he refers to as the the play and pay cycle. He says that when when people first find the SCA, it's all experience it's all play essentially you're learning new things you're seeing new things you're meeting people you're enjoying the experience you're playing without having put in the work without paying the work that goes into putting on an event doing things um <clears throat> and so people will then if they stay in start playing start helping and it's important to find ways that new people, maybe not, maybe not their first event, though I've seen that happen too, that they can participate in service, that they can help, that they can feel useful, that they can feel they're contributing in a way that is satisfying to them. <clears throat> if somebody, and this goes through a cycle as you stay in the SCA for a long time, sometimes you're enjoying yourself, sometimes you're working, People who only are playing <clears throat> and never do any service, never give back in any way, tend to leave. They tend to not participate in over a long, longer period of time because they're not really invested in the organization and the people. <clears throat> but people who <clears throat> only jump into service and keep doing that and do that and only do that also get burned out they forget how to play they forget how to enjoy themselves and uh, i've experienced that i know a lot of people who have um <clears throat> there's one there's a reason that you see a lot of people who serve on the board of directors which is usually comes after kingdom office and society office and on the direct board and other offices they tend to stop participating because it's just been too much. Um, <clears throat> they've also seen all the all the negative parts and dealt with all the negative parts, um, and there are some. But so it's that 
pay and play cycle is what tends to keep people coming back because they're playing, they're enjoying themselves, but they're also giving back. They're invested in the organization. They're invested in the other people in the organization. And so I think, I think finding ways for newer people to, to help is important. Finding ways for people <clears throat> who've been in a while to either keep helping uh, or to be able to take a break and not feel that they have the whole responsibility on them, that there are other people who can step up and do the work as well. I think both of those are important. Yeah, the, there was a bit of a common thread to what he realized to new people, but with the, the older ones, and that is kind of a level of just general strict behavior. Um, you know, we would joke for years that, you know, you're not a real SCA person until you're telling somebody they can't do something. Um, and that usually comes with, oh, you're doing something wrong. You violated some court of etiquette or protocol like we were talking about earlier, or there's some expectation which we have that you didn't know about and now you've tripped over it and now we're gonna basically step on your feet. Um, and it's that that behavior gets old real quick, regardless of what your level of experience in. It, obviously, if it's your first time, it's gonna be real off-putting because you know in your head, you're like, I had no idea. But if, even if you've been around a year or two and you still didn't realize some deeper level of etiquette that you somehow tripped over, um, you can feel just as humiliated and and berated for the fact that you you did something that you, you know you didn't even know really about, um, and that's I think where the the solution to that one's going to be the kindness and understanding. And it sounds repetitive, but those those things that can turn somebody off can happen so quickly and have such a profound impact. You may not even realize that if you're the one dishing it out, but from the other side, it can be soul crushing. Um, so I think maybe t being a little bit more relaxed and a little bit lower strung in terms of, you know, what is it going to take to kind of get, get your, get you upset about things not going the way that you want. And again, like we said earlier, we're coming back, we're going to be rusty. Um, everybody's going to be a little awkward. It's not going to feel the same way, uh, just to have that, that level of understanding that, um, you know, we're just glad to be participating in this thing together again. Um, not that everybody has to be, you know, performing up to a certain standard. Um, you know, there's always going to be, you know, and I know the SCA is for, for all time as it has always attracted people that are awkward. There's quite a few people that they love the idea, but they're not very outgoing or they're not very uh, extroverted, but they want to hang out anyhow. Um, you know, it's going to be an interesting mix when we all finally come together because I think we're everybody's going to get a, a sample of what it's like to be awkward and introverted again um, just because we're, we've been in our living room for so long uh, you know for the most part yeah, and picking up on what Tristan said there you know something that we sometimes forget is that you know we are a, an educational organization we, we are supposed to be teaching and that includes you know teaching the, the etiquette of court or the kingdom of the society of your barony, whatever that may be. Um, and, you know, that's, that's your hero moment that can happen, you know, five, 10 times, five, 10, 15 times at an event where you have an opportunity to help explain someone, help navigate them through the choppy waters of how the SCA works. And, and that, that's also, you know, when I say choppy waters, because if you don't handle it right, it could be that turnoff moment. Well, like, wow, that guy was really kind of a jerk about that. I, do I really want to come back? Or, you know, all the guys that look like that must be jerks. So those knights must be jerks or, you know, or, or whatever it may be, or Vikings might be jerks or, you know, wh whatever. You get lumped into that, into that club because of, of what you look like and, and, and how you handle the interaction. And, and I, I think we need to, to challenge our own assumptions. You know, don't assume that they know better because lots of times folks don't. And, and handle that interaction carefully so that you're not going to drive off that new member. Yeah, yeah as, Ed, as Edmund just mentioned, there may be quite a few opportunities where we and a lot of other people go, oh, yeah, I forgot that. Please excuse me. Right. We're going to enter into a time now where we're coming back again after a year. 
And I would think a lot, if not most people, are just going to want to play. So being very aware of our need to be kind and compassionate to others, hopefully, will come to the forefront. I need to learn everyone's name again. Shit. Uh, so I, I think something we need to, to start looking into, and this is a society-wide thing, is that uh, finding new ways to connect with younger people. And since uh, what I mean by that is uh, a lot of these like flyers or having a, you know, um, a, a, an event at a, at a college and things like that may not be reaching them anymore because it's not how they actually interact. And we need to stop uh, thinking like, oh, well, this always worked in the past, right? Uh, maybe we need to, as a society, look at figuring out ways to have online videos that just describe things, uh, or even like a welcome video to the SCA that is modern and, and, and interesting to young people. Also, uh, web presence and things like that that I don't understand really, but but I'm going to hope that we we can find people that that do and and can then connect with them in a way that makes it so that it seems relevant to them, right? This is not like uh, you know they're the you know you have to be 40 years old or whatever to join the SCA or you know we want to make it seem like a place where like when we started there was all kinds of people of all different ages and and it's just that I think that we've lost the way of communicating with those people currently do you guys have any ideas about that uh I mean I think Edmund's got his hand up here we'll probably just roll to him and see what he's got to say but let's jump in there you're muted, you're muted. I, sorry, I had my hand up on something else, but uh, I forgot to take it down. But yeah, I'll, I'll tackle this. Yeah, I mean, as as somebody who is the, the dad age for a typical young college guy, it is it is a a tough situation to want to stick myself into because I yeah you know, I'm very self conscious about you know why would a college kid want to talk to some gray old dude, um, and then you know I, I I personally have the additional impediment of you know, being a really tall figure. So people are innately afraid of me just because, you know, big, scary dude, he's old. I want nothing to do with that. And I, I still, I'll be honest, I still haven't come up with a way to overcome that challenge um, other than, you know, the usual tactics I use, which is talk to people sitting down or, you know, everybody sit at the table together to, to negate my height um, and just and, and just try to, try to listen and be available um, when when somebody does want to talk, if I if I get them to engage, something I hadn't thought about was trying to figure out ways to get people or households that are pretty well established to to kind of sponsor like young kids, right? And so maybe like you have a loaner tent and gear like that, but you cover their site fee and you you know you you help them out that way. So because if you're a college kid, there's a lot of times something like. Uh, $20 uh, for a site fee is really pushing on their limit of, their, of what they can do, right? So instead what we have is, you know, you, you let that burden be carried by, you know, people or groups that can carry that for them. And then it becomes like uh, the bar of entry becomes a little bit lower, right? So now they can come, they, they know they've got a weekend or they don't have to worry about food, right? And things like that. And then, and they give them the space to go and explore it on their own, but have a happy kind of a, base for them to come back to right like a, a safe place for them to come they know they're taken care of they know they got their stuff and, it, and this is like a little thing that honestly how many times do we have extra tunics i mean and things like that around keep a box of that stuff with you at the events and be willing to help out that new person or a new person in your shire or your local area just you know hey i got this you can wear right and then immediately just wearing the right type of clothes will change someone's uh, attitude about the event because imagine if you're the only person in a t-shirt and jeans right you feel weird but as soon as you put on that tunic which if you were anywhere else you'd be the weirdo you're now instantly part of the group right and so we can we can start kind of facilitating these things a little bit for them and taking that extra burden off the young people like that way I think it would be really helpful and then you know the, hopefully they'll pay it forward in the long run anyway so that's kind of where I was going with that um who do we got next here I, I was thinking uh Anybody got one on? on, I, have on the, I have something. Uh, Eli, go ahead. So um, I teach uh, at a university, and I, of course, have a lot of college age students, and the they don't use Facebook. They use 
Instagram, they use TikTok, they use some will use Twitter. They get their news from social media. I always do an informal survey of my students asking them, <clears throat> but the, the lot of them are into gaming, a lot of, you know, and so where the question is, where did people find ESCA? Where are they finding it now? And where are people now? Well, if they're a younger audience, they're online. And our, our online, the SA's online presence has been slow to um, catch up <laughs> with uh, technology. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I think that that's, uh, it's essential if, if we're going to, if it's not about us finding them, it's about them being able to find us easily. And that's, that's one of the, that's really one of the principles of modern advertising and marketing. It's not about necessarily finding your audience. It's about being in the place where it's easy to be found by the audience that is, it will be interested in you. And with, uh, and that's, that's a question for us all to think about. And really we should be asking people who are newer, how did you find the SCA and what appealed to you about it and why did you stay? And uh, the SCA has tried to do surveys over the years of these kinds of questions and has, has gotten a terrible low response. Um, uh, so I think we'll probably be better off gathering that kind of information anecdotally uh, from people we know and then trying to apply it. And I think that's one of the things as we start back up is we should be taking notes. We should be paying attention to what are people saying about why they're coming back? What are people who didn't aren't coming back? What are they saying? And, and paying attention in that, in that way. So, um, and I, I think there's also a possibility we will lose some people who have participated for a longer time because they've gotten out of the habit of it as well. So that's also a question. Um, <clears throat> particularly if people can interact with their tribe, with their chosen group of people online and, and find that perhaps as satisfying, they may not see a need to go to an event. I've heard people say, hey, you know, we should just get together and not bother with an event because there's so much to do and there's a court and a tournament and a feast and a, a whole bunch of stuff. Let's just get together with our friends and, and hang out. So <clears throat> I, I think paying attention to what people say as they're coming back and making a special effort to ask people why they're coming back and finding people who aren't and asking them why. Uh, you're muted. I can read your lips. I know. <laughs> I said, damn it. Uh, all right. uh, I, I was just joking to myself, too. I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to miss it this time. I uh, sure did. Um, anyway, so I think we're going to switch topics to uh, looking at kind of how do we bridge this kind of uh, experience gap with the, the newer people and, and helping them by, and with the experience from the, the older people in the group uh, or more experienced people in the group. So, uh, Tristan, you got something on that one? Yeah, you know, in fact, I wanted to share a real jewel uh, in terms of perspective on this one, because, you know, I've, I've run across a few people that are really experienced and they seem to have a, the air of, uh, you know, they don't want to be bothered with new people. Like they don't want to have to be bothered with showing some, you know, young pup the ropes or whatever. They kind of want to play at their, at their strata and level. Uh, and what I've found, there is no greater joy than tapping into the energy of a brand new person that comes in and their their eyes are filled with wonder they, they can't believe what they're seeing and what they have available to them and when you guide them to what they really want and what they're really like i mean it, it's it, it's fan, it's a fantastic thing and it's not about filling your own ego by saying well let me impart all my incredible wisdom and knowledge upon you 
you get to share in a bit of their excitement. And that's, that's a, a, a great thing. I get that as an Aikido teacher, martial art instructor, when I can show them what they're capable of doing and they, they get this sense of wonder. Like that's what I love about teaching and coaching. But the same thing holds true with guiding anybody into the wonder that is the SCA. Like there's so much breadth, like, like Ilya was talking about, the first time or the first year, they're not even gonna see all the incredible things that they could see. Only with, when an experienced hand guides them towards those things, do they really appreciation of what is all there for them to find. And so I guess for experienced people, my advice is never dismiss a newer person because you think they're going to be tough to deal with or kind of they're going to bog you down or they're going to take you away from your friends. The chances are they're going to be your best friend and they're going to look at you like, like you are their best friend. So that's an opportunity. It's not a burden. Yeah, to play off that, Tristan, I think you hit it right on the head because I think some people always say, well, I've seen behind the curtain now, so the dream isn't quite as exciting for anymore because I, I know how it all works. I've stood behind court or I've led court or I've been king. That new person is your chance to see things through those untainted eyes, to step back on the other side of the curtain for a little while and and just reimmerse yourself into that other part of the SCA. and as you're helping navigate those folks through the different communities and, and kind of exploring what things that they might like and giving them an opportunity to taste part of the arts or the fighting and help them support getting a kit together and feeling some pride in what they're doing and some um, allowing them to have some ownership in the SCA. When, when you start to build those sorts of relationships, you're not gonna throw that away normally unless you come across some horrible experience or um, what you're getting is not uh, kind of honest or true to, to what was presented. So I think that taking the time um, to do that, it's just like teaching. You teach somebody something new, you learn a little something new. So it's a two-way street there. I think there's a lot to be gained by supporting new folks in the SCA and fostering kids, fostering young adults, um, all the way up the ladder. And I liked how Edmund said earlier about sitting down when he's talking to people because he's really tall. Well, that goes the same for kids. If you're out at a park and there's kids watching a practice, take a knee, you know, check with their parents, hand them a stick and take 10 minutes out of your practice to, to give them a little bit of the spark of interacting with knights and, and uh, the, whole, the whole aspect of the, of the Middle Ages and chivalry. They'll, they'll remember it. And even if they don't join the SCA or their family's not interested, they might come back when they're 16 and 18 and 20 say, hey, I did this thing. I wonder where I could get back involved in that. You know, I, I got to say, having someone like a, a new person it was one of the best experiences for me. And it did build, honestly, one of my best friends. My, I met a guy, uh, he came into my work one day and, and we started talking and I was like, oh, you seem interested in this Viking era stuff. And if you're ever interested in, sword fighting, I'd love to work with you. And about a year later, he came back to my work again and was like, hey, um, I, you know, I, do you, is that, does that offer still stand? And I was like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about because it had been so long. And he's like, a year ago, you said that you'd teach me a sword. I was like, yes, absolutely. I would totally love to do that, right? Yeah, right. And, and it ended up that I started taking him to going to events with me and I, and I ended up squaring him. And then he became like, his, he's my, one of my best friends in the whole world. And having that energy of someone who is new and, and, and focused and excited really as a, you know, helped reinvigorate my energy in the SCA as well. And, and I, and I can tell you that's a 100% success story that if you do that, you will find that person who will be a great friend. Oftentimes you'll help them find that tribe that they're looking for. Right. And, and also just, it's just the spark that they have is sometimes so exciting. I, I love that part. And so, uh, I, I cannot recommend it higher. So uh, Sagan, what do you got? Well, one of the things that, again, we, we should all remember is that at one point, we were all beginners. Yep. We were all newbies. We all showed up and went, huh? And at that point, maybe now is the time that, especially with your experience and your knowledge, that you hearken back to that and go, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in here and I'm going to offer this to this person. I'm going to give them the opportunity. 
because it is an opportunity, whether or not they accept it or decline it is up to them, of my experience and my knowledge. The other thing to remember is that your interaction with them could be just the one that gets them to stay. And please make sure it's not the one that drives them away. Good point. You know, as we as we open up uh, the SCA again here, we're going to have like an opportunity to do kind of a big reset. And there's like things that, uh, you know, that we can look at to change on in, in many aspects of the SCA. But one of them would be um, letting go of some of those the negative things that were that you were holding on to in the past, like issues with uh, this person over here or 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 like, uh, you know, I don't get along with this type of thing. Forget about that stuff, because it's 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 a chance for us to all have a clean slate reset restart to this game. And, and it'll, it'll be a lot of energy coming around because it's going to be open again and new. And, but remember to, to let those old bugaboos and hatreds and things like that go right. And find the joy. And if you find the joy, I think that'll translate across to, to everyone around you. And I, and that'll help with the new people as well. But I think that as a restart, we have that, that capacity coming up. And so I'm, I'm looking, to, looking forward to my opportunity to forget those things. You know, one, one tip that I came across a while back, and this has been very helpful, and that is uh, a Zen perspective, where if you can imagine a, a train made up of a bunch of different cars, and each, as each of those train cars comes by you, it's an emotion. And that's like, as you would experience a good thing in life, the next car comes and suddenly it's it's joy or it's anger or it's frustration or it's happiness you can step back and actually watch the cars go by instead of feeling like each car is hitting you and when you step back you can see that the the uh, input that got that emotion to flood you does not have to control you you can choose whether or not you want to have it express itself or you can just say you know what i'm gonna let that car go by it's, it's not worth not worth getting into it and that's something that has helped quite a few people not just ride the ride of the next wave and the next wave and the next wave of emotions and get bounced around it allows you to take a certain amount of control over what you how you respond to things that would normally either upset you or make you happy or or whatever, but you can choose which ones you embrace and then which ones you let go of. And I found that to be very helpful. It is, it is the opportunity of a new beginning. Mm -hmm. And therefore it deserves the honor and the perspective of no preconceived ideas of how it's gonna go. Just because this was true a year ago doesn't mean it will be true now. And there's a lot of new opportunity that's going to present itself in a lot of different ways. And if we're open to it, I think a lot of us are going to be surprised and very happy with the outcome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so since a lot of our shows uh, are uh, evolve around uh, the, the fighting uh, side of what we do, being SCA coaches and things like that. Uh, how do you guys see us make practices uh, more of a kind of a safe and open place to bring new people in? Uh, do you guys have any ideas about like what types of uh, ways of doing that? And I think that uh, that would be something we should all look to checking out. Well, I know we've got a show on the tentative schedule for how to, how to create a practice and a practice group coming up uh, before too long. So um, I know we, that's going to be a, probably a whole solid episode just in and of itself. But I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. You know, the first step is going to be reach out and communicate with people. Um, find out, you know, the people that were around before, see if you can get them back. Um, you know, start doing the phone calls or sending emails or dropping people messages on Facebook or however you connect with them. Try to re reconnect. And everything in the universe is based on energy. The one who puts the energy out is going to be the one that creates the wave and the motion and the excitement. Um, if you're going to sit and wait for somebody to reach out to you, you might never 
there might be nothing that ever happens. Um, so, and, and this is something I noticed that kind of shifted from the SCA that I started in and then what it sort of shifted into in the, in the, the 90s and 2000s where, um, you know, it was very clearly a volunteer-based organization that if you wanted something, you would go create it. If you liked an activity, you'd go and organize it. Um, you volunteering was just the standard like everybody was willing to pitch in help out set up take down clean up do whatever it took to get that activity going and it seemed like in the 90s the SCA was kind of a victim of its own success where it became big enough and well organized enough where people would show up and just kind of go well what what's been organized for me what can I go do sort of like a customer to Disneyland um, and with that shift I think we, we accidentally created something that actually draw organizers out when they're expected to come up with great events, great activities, and that's just the normal, the normal state of things. And it's easy for the kind of the newer people that are in the play mode to view that as just, this is what a bunch of people do for me. And that creates, I think, an unsustainable path. And that's something we can fix going into the future where we say, make sure that we get in touch with that, that volunteer attitude that the SCA had back in the 80s and, and early 90s, where you know, people were grateful when events were held and activities were organized and they were done well, when heart, parties were hosted and they, were, uh, they would be happy to reciprocate or offer to support those things. Um, I, think, I think the SCA could, we could all do better in making sure that we express our gratitude, express our support, and be willing to roll up our sleeves and help, even if it's just cleaning up afterwards, that we enjoyed the activity and we're willing to help, uh, you know, not dump on just a few people that we're organizing to straighten everything up and get it going. Well, I think that's an important part too, when you have a new person, the easiest way to get somebody involved in the SCA is to say, hey, let's go help set up the air probes. Hey, let's go see if they need help uh, with the water bears. It's a great way to have a front row seat and get to meet some of the fighting community. Hey, let's go, you know, and, and help them find different paths to volunteer that are interesting things. Um, I think that's that's really important. I really enjoyed that in my early career. I still, if I go to another kingdom and I get up early on a tournament or something, if there's something I can help with, I want to be out there helping because I get to meet people from that area um, and. Uh, sort of be an ambassador for my own kingdom. I still remember my first event when I was 15 and serving the feast because um, yeah. I didn't have anything else to do. I didn't know anybody. So I got to meet people and have something in flowers. It was, you know, it was great. Plus, yeah, if you're helping serve for a feast. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'm just going to say, plus, if you're helping serve for a feast, chances are you're going to get some great tidbits. The cooks will pass you some good stuff and that's a great place to be yeah. close yeah. to the kitchen. Well, and, and, and teaching a, a new person at their first event that um, you know you pitch in, they're gonna they're gonna have something to do because I mean, how many times does a new person show up in the event, and if they don't have someone to shepherd them through what's going on, they're just kind of wandering around doing nothing, and you know maybe they don't get that traction. And you know, sure, maybe cut chopping carrots wasn't what they thought the SCA was all about. But then they get to meet the people in the kitchen and they have a good time and they're laughing and having fun. And, you know, that get that gets that traction that that may not be their thing in the SCA, but that's always something that they can draw. And it's like, yeah, I'm going to do that, too, after I get done teaching brewing or after I get done, you know, fighting or, or what have you. It, it gives them an end. It, it gets their foot in the door socially. Yeah. Being bored is a lot worse than being useful. Yeah. Even if you may think that the, the use you're providing is not very exciting or thrilling, but standing around, you know, lonely and bored, <laughs> that, that sucks. Right. You won't come back if right. you're not having fun. You know, trying to get uh, a new person uh, drawn into stuff, I found that uh, in situations where I was raining to actually bring a few brand new people, like, you know, into uh, being on court. And, and they're, you'd be surprised at how excited they are to just be doing that kind of court activity, uh, you know, because it's a chance for them to, like you said, meet people. They, it's like a hyper learning uh, situation with them on how the basically the SCA works. 
And, and I found that they're oftentimes the best court members that you could possibly have. You know, uh, you have that person who has been around for a long time, maybe give them one job and one job specifically. So they're not, cause they're burned out anyway, right. From doing court activities, but like newer people will be just this type of thing or, or having them, uh, you know, learn how to do field heraldry or, or whatever that you'd be surprised at how much these little things like that, helping and support them in these behaviors. Well, you'll find that they're just, just stoked. And it'll oftentimes lead them off into the directions that they're going to go organically in their experience. Um, I just think that that is a huge thing to keep in mind as you go forward. Uh, you know, always think about those new people and bringing them back in. Uh, you know, so. Uh, yeah. We've, we've had some great um, crowns that would go through a court. And one of the points of business is to ask all of the people that this is their first event to stand up and everybody cheers and recognizes them and uh it's cool they feel like part of the group i mean it might make some folks that are a little more introverted a little nervous but uh, i think it's a neat way just to welcome folks what do we got eli you want to jump in with something you looked like you had something you said you wanted to, to say I I lost my internet for a, a, a moment, so I'm catching up with oh. the with the conversation. So. My bad. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, gotcha. All right. Um, all right. So I think that uh, that right now, let's, I'm going to try and pull up some topics from the uh, internet here. Um, there's like people saying uh, there is an interesting one, and I don't actually have any answer for this. Um, does anyone know what the corporate approved? Uh, answer for a new person who would ask if we are all vaccinated. And I, and I don't actually know if there is anything from a, like a board level, uh, you know, kind of edict on how do we address the fact that we're vaccinated or not. Well, I think asking about somebody's medical history yeah. is a bit of a taboo. I agree. Like to call it a yeah. HIPAA violation where you it's not a, really it, are not. It's, yeah, not a legal HIPAA violation. Yeah. It's just kind of a, like a- Isn't it? Yeah, no. it's yeah. not a you can always HIPAA ask violation suppose, but... because that information, HIPAA refers to to medical professionals releasing information. That's so it is. someone can ask. Um, I think what what we've been talking about is simply volunteering the information by wearing a pin. You cannot. Branches of the SCA cannot ask people by the board has ruled this cannot ask people their vaccination status there when they're go. coming to an event but i can i can i can wear a pin that says vaccinated and there's some cool designs out there we've got one that's um a phoenix uh over a banner that says va vaccinated um <clears throat> and i'm gonna wear that just to let people know uh <clears throat> so but you you can't ask as uh an organization you can't ask as a as a branch um, or at an event you because not I disagree with the the board's ruling on this I understand the reasoning but I disagree with it I think you should be able to say hey you know we're you're not vaccinated get vaccinated you know but um, we can't do that because that the board has ruled so um, <clears throat> but um, I can volunteer the information by wearing something, you know, pointing to it. So, yeah, that's an interesting, uh, interesting topic because I, I think that there is a lot of space because uh, private organizations can ask you that to be, in, to be involved in their activity that you have to prove you're vaccinated, right? And so we are technically a, we're not a you know a public business or anything. I guess we are definitely a private organization. But if, if that's the way that we're doing it right now, um, I, I don't know if that's right or wrong, but I, I can tell you that uh, definitely I, I have no problem wearing something that would say I'm vaccinated. Uh, but I don't think that that actually fixes the issue. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but- uh, Well, especially if it turns into the, well, you, you better have one or you're gonna be ostracized, you know? Yeah. Cause you may choose like, I just didn't, go buy one i didn't have a chance to go find one or get one or who right. knows what and this comes back to the you know being handling your dis differences in a graceful way 
and not assuming that if someone isn't wearing one, that they are somehow in defiance of, you know, because right. they could have been vaccinated, just don't have a pen or whatever. And there like, are people is it going to become a social standard or not? There are people who can't get vaccinated. Yeah. And they're they're medical, right. Yeah. right. Right. So I'm not saying to anybody else, I'm simply offering, I will right. be providing this to, um, because the goal is to, for me, I want to make people feel more comfortable. So, um, except when I don't, but, um, <laughs> well, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, <clears throat> but it, it's, I want to provide that information that can't be required. And I, it shouldn't become a standard just in the same way we're saying wearing the finest period clothing shouldn't become an inaccessible standard to people. Um, it's it's about being welcoming. Yeah, that's a, that's a, the uh, the real trick, isn't it? Is making sure that people feel welcome and 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 as we go forward, there. I mean, we've always had people that uh, you know have different kind of ideas about vaccinations uh, in our club, and so we just have to be kind of thoughtful about how to address that. Uh, to answer the person's question on the online, there is no. I don't think we have a definable answer, really, guy, and so um, I can't say for sure. The, what the right way to approach this is. Um, if you're asking for like a corporate level thing, I, I don't, I think the answer is we cannot ask people, but I don't know what you would tell a new person. I think you would have to tell them that to, that they have to be thoughtful of, of their own health and their own, uh, make their own choices here. But other than that, I can't really respond to that. So I wish there was a better answer for you. Um, I don't think there is right now. Right. About one of the only things we can offer up, though, for sure, is if you're wondering about a corporate level question, contact corporate. Yeah, sure. They'll have an answer. Yeah. Well said. So anyone got anything else they want to add to this uh, type of topic here? We're, we're kind of running out of uh, questions here and um, wondering uh, where we go from there. Well, we kind of circled uh, away from yeah, the I'd whole like thing. to maybe right. cover the how to handle differences uh, a little bit more because yeah, okay. I think that's going to be a big challenge of as we come back and, and I'm sure I'm not the only one we've all experienced the the pleasure of what they call the ESCA which is social media uh, email lists um, interacting with one another just through keyboards and screens uh, and I'm sure I'm not unique in the fact that I've seen just tsunamis of frustration and rage and anger and disagreement and division. Um, I, th I think it's going to be hard to, to put that aside when going back face to face, but it has to be our priority. We might know something about someone we've, we've known before face to face, or we have a, per a perception of them that we learned through some sort of online disagreement or argument that they've had. Um, in many ways, I think that social media is kind of a toxic brew. And, right. and, and it's, I think we have to recognize that it's a detrimental fact to the relationships of not just fellow SCA members, but family members, friends, all kinds of close relations have been kind of torn asunder by the things that happen in online forums. And I wanted to, to, to address that too, because I don't think it'll be easy to put behind this, but I think it has to be put behind. Um, you know, just because you may see things differently than somebody else does not mean that you can uh, put down your civility or put down your courtesy uh, or put aside your ability to even just be in pr the, their presence. Um, get over it. You, you have to do that. The, one of the issues with social media is that even if people are identified um they feel a certain anonymity and people will say things online with a screen in between them and that they wouldn't say to people face to face and <clears throat> the the problem is we often, a lot of people have their SCA name as their Facebook name or in parentheses. So we know who they are. And 
therefore we've had an expectation that people will behave with the same courtesy online that they would behave in in the way they would behave in person and people don't do that and i i but i'm an old fashioned kind of guy i think that wherever you're speaking whether it's online or to somebody in person you should maintain the same level of courtesy i think people it's a that's a different topic can people lose the right to be courteous have courtesy directed towards them and i say they can but but that's not what we're talking about here and so people have a different expectation of how they behave online and in person and and this is going to this will be challenging when you've interacted with somebody online and it's been very negative and as you said as you you learn something about them that you didn't know or you disagree with because people have been pretty vocal about a lot of things in the past um past year and a half <clears throat> and uh i'd say that if we're going to view this as a reset give people a, an opportunity give people a chance give people uh, the benefit give people the benefit of the doubt but also you're not forced to interact with anybody there is no obligation you can be civil to somebody you can be courteous to somebody but that doesn't mean you have to hang out and and hang out with them for an extended period of time you can say hello um how are you please and thank you and all those other things um and you know as i often say just like there's a silent e at the end of word there's a silent asshole at the end of some sentences but it's silent and as long as it remains silent you're being technically courteous be courteous you don't you're not required to hang out with everybody anybody but view this as a reset there are people i if I, if we can't talk to people with whom we disagree we have lost something um <clears throat> I'd say the exception is people who are intolerant. If you are familiar with Popper's um, uh, paradox of intolerance, that being tolerant toward people who are intolerant leads to pervasive intolerance. That's the one exception. Because one of the, as I, we mentioned before, people stay in the SCA because of the other people people leave the SCA because of other people. And if people coming back are some of the people who are going to drive people away, we have an obligation to, because of their behavior, not their attitudes, not their what they're thinking, but how they act towards other people, we have an obligation to make the organization friendly for and welcoming for people. And so, it's complicated. I realize I'm saying lots of different, seemingly contradictory things, but we have to be mindful of all of them. Right, right. Courteous, kind, calm, and respectful. Be kind and respectful to the changes you observe in others. Be aware, <coughs> be calm and respectful of the changes others may see in you. It's not a one, not necessarily a one-way street. And again, we're coming together after more than a year apart. There will be differences, and they present opportunities. And it is incumbent upon us as members, and especially this group of individuals as peers, to make that transition as easy for everyone as possible. It it may be a challenge in some ways and it may be an absolute delight in others enjoy both you know something to think about as we go into these like future conversations with people that uh that we haven't seen in a long time is 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 try and steer away from those things right as, as we go into it focus on like hey haven't seen you in a while and and, and talk about the, the good parts of the sca rather than going into talking about some kind of bullshit modern politics thing, right? Which uh, a lot of times is a path to 
a, a really awful situation. And, and in the past, we never had this problem because we were always so focused on what was going on around us at the time that I think that, uh, that it was pretty easy to look past that. Um, and I have a lot of friends who have very different political views than I do. And we are very, very close and good friends, right? We, we can all do that. It's just that, like you said, this last year and a half has been very toxic with people, you know, uh, becoming very polarized and attacking each other uh, instead of listening or trying to figure things out. And, and, and so I think that if we, when we come back to real time in the SCA, try not to go down that path. Try and like, you know, like, how's your year been? Or, you know, talk about like what new project you're working on or something instead. Just don't, don't start that fight because a lot of times, you know, it's not, if you don't talk about it, you guys will just talk about that thing you love. And so, Edmund. Yeah. So, you know, we all came to this club because we have some interest in medieval stuff. And that's where most of us have related to, to each other for as long as we've been around. Um, but, you know, this last year with, with being, you know, shut in, you know, we're, we're grasping for inputs and you know, some kind of input. And unfortunately, a lot of the inputs we got were for some pretty awful stuff going on in the world. And we got riled up and we talked about it because that's what we had. You know, we, we, we had, you know, whatever was great and new on Netflix and whatever was awful happening in the world. And that's what we all reacted to. And that's what we all talked about. And, and some people showed their, their uglier side, you know, whether it was a bad opinion or bad behavior in the way they expressed their opinion. But, uh, you know, I think to a good extent, you know, when we get back to looking at the pictures from the event this weekend and the new thing that somebody made, or if this was at fight practice, you know, we're going to get back to that more normal uh, um, interaction with the folks in the SCA that we've always known. And yeah, some of that ugly stuff is still going to be kind of an undercurrent, but, you know, you've got cool stuff to talk about now, so you don't have to talk about that other stuff that might be more divisive. I, I do think it's important though, especially as leaders in your various communities and such, to keep an eye out because we're talking about how to keep folks in the SCA. And when somebody is being intolerant or, or causing some microaggressions and things, you don't necessarily have to make it a big blustery, <laughs> nice saying, a big blustery thing you can talk to them to the side and as long as it's not gonna become a reoccurring habit of um, toxicity, then maybe you can help them remember why they're in the SCA and what not to bring with them to the SCA. But I think that we can't always be 100% tolerable or any more at all when somebody's bringing toxicity because that is the number one way to get rid of new people and to stop growing as an organization. Um, and you lose a lot of um, amazing potential when you allow that stuff to happen. Yeah, we, we need to make sure people aren't bringing their, their toxic keyboard warrior persona to the event. Yep, That's, there's no place for that. Yeah, leave that I think I put that into the, because we're kind of wrapping things up here, into the category of handling your differences. There's a way to handle those differences in a big explosive manner that everybody sees and then there's a subtle way to take it out basically like kind of take it off to the side to say hey listen i want this to be cool let's just sort of chill this out and not make a big drama out of it um and i think that that's as we get together face to face the thing to keep in mind is don't be the explosion part be the damp you want to kind of move the explosion out of public out of the public sphere and try to cool things off um, you know, I think this is one of those things that as people get more experienced in the SCA, maybe they become peers or, or leaders of any kind, whether you're an autocrat or anything like that, your goal is to make things run smoothly and have people have a good time. If you're not there to do that, you're in the wrong place. So just be the one who wants to make everything run smoothly and have, and have everybody enjoy themselves. I, yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, okay, with anyone have any last statements on this or we're gonna roll into closing up the show tonight? I think yeah. we're- I think That was mine. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Tristan did a good job. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a couple of things at the end I'd like to mention. I really would. Go ahead. 
we are, here we go. We've talked about this, I don't know how many times now. The green light is coming on. Yay, you bet. You bet, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Can't wait. Looking forward to it. Yes, there will be things that have changed. Yes, there will be people who have changed. Just be prepared. There may also, you may discover, some people that have passed away. That may be a very real part of your initial experience. There will be people who have left the group, but the SCA remains. And the SCA is why we are here. It's what we do, it's what we love. And as we've spoken of, our differences are our differences, but almost guaranteed, there's commonality as well. And the SCA draws us to that and brings us together in the enjoyment of all it has to offer. All right. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone uh, for such great insight. Everyone shared a lot of really good information. Um, and I, I think that this is a thing that uh, we all will be dealing with hopefully very soon. And I hope that it's going to be uh, when it opens up, it turns out to be everything that we remembered and loved. Okay. Um, that being said, uh, thanks for tuning in. And next week, we're going to be doing a show on age is just a number. Uh, and so uh, that'll be discussing um, aging and fighting and also, think, you know, topics like that. All right. Uh, so yeah. that being said, thanks for tuning in. And we look forward to seeing you guys next week.